Welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Has the way that love has arisen in you seemed out of place or even taboo? My mission is to expand the conversation of love in the world. Is it possible to have deep, loving, healthy relationships? Have you ever been curious about having more than one relationship or partner at a time? Get ready to transform in love. Be courageous and set yourself free. In this show, we talk about relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. I shed light on things that are not always talked about with conversations about expanding love. The Elizabeth Cunningham Show starts now. Hello, welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding in Love. My name is Elizabeth Cunningham. I am your host, and it is my pleasure to be here today <laughs> um, with uh, Melissa Louise, and we are going to be talking about pleasure. And when I think about pleasure, I think about like ooey gooey drippiness and like chocolate and yumminess and Melissa um Melissa and I know each other through the erotic blueprint coaching so she's already mm -hmm. like oh well I see your sensual I see your sensual <laughs> coming out in your pleasure um but I'm going to introduce our guest today um her name is Melissa Louise and she is a true pleasure advocate it's been amazing being a colleague of hers and getting to know her um she teaches men to last longer in bed, women to know their birthright of pleasure, and couples to foster the safety to create the erotic space. Mm. Oh my goodness. And mm. the perfect erotic turn-on cocktail that nourishes your health and well-being, and that your pleasure is non-negotiable. I love that. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much for being here with me today. How are you? Oh my goodness, I am so well. And thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here as well. And as you know, this is obviously one of my most favorite subjects. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be fun. I know we are. We're going to have a great time talking about pleasure today. So, so yeah. So tell us the juice and I say juice, you know, I, I, like I was sharing earlier, I get like ooey gooey and drippy about it, mm -hmm. but you know, pleasure shows up in so many different ways. So tell me more about, you know, your, your views on pleasure and how you help people um, with their own pleasure. Mm, thank you. Well, as you said, you know, how, what I truly believe and know is that pleasure is our birthright. And so my main focus is really supporting people to understand that pleasure needs to be in the center of their life, not something that we work towards and we're waiting to win or achieve later or earn points to have. So where I come from is we're looking at the science and the practicality of how pleasure works in the body, in the masculine body and in the feminine body, how it resets our hormones and how it's so intrinsically involved in the health of our being. Because in our culture, in our society presently, and since, especially since the introduction of the Industrial Revolution, when that kind of took over and started to dictate how we lived our lives, pleasure is something that's been removed to be able to keep many people under control. So mm -hmm. I don't want to dive deep into the patriarchal model that's done because there's so many conversations around that. And that's a very separate conversation. It's a very important one. But what I really want to express is that the concept of the patriarch and how it's shown up in our culture has really dismembered not only the feminine way that we live, but also it's done a disservice to the masculine. Mm -hmm. So pleasure is not this thing that's in a corner that's dirty that is to be kept secret because we place the aspect of pleasure in the corner of sex and sex is this thing that oh is you know sort of that we all want but no one wants to talk about it's everything in the world is about sex except for sex <laughs> like, somehow donuts are sexual <laughs> but 
the most people buying donuts can't even say the word sex you know it's like they're shoving donuts down so that we don't have to you know really think about the fact of what we really want so everything in the world is about sex except for sex I cannot agree more with you and I want to kind of parcel out some of the things Mm. that we that you excuse me that you shared um and just so we have like a foundation so everyone is kind of on the same page of what we're talking about here Mm -hmm. so when you say masculine and feminine um what do you mean by that because I know that there's you know there's the separation between like your biological um like anatomy versus your gender your gender expression which is also different than like masculine and feminine energy um so can you kind of parcel that out for us like what do you mean when you say masculine and feminine so in the world in the world of polarity we need to have masculine feminine energies combined for eroticism in my work when i'm supporting a masculine being like a, a you know someone that is um identifying as a man who has genitals that are masculine based and hormones that are masculine based when I'm working with them we're working with the masculine genitalia because there's a different way to you know for them to move their energy up their spine into different parts of their brain when I'm speaking of the feminine energy in a feminine a woman that is you know um identifying as a feminine being you know I work with menstruation cycles and I work with womb energy we can definitely when someone is presenting identifying in you know through an end that they may not have been born in we work with the energetics but when I'm speaking of masculine energy we're looking at polarity and then when I'm speaking of you know hormones we're looking at a particular body identifying in a particular body so it really depends on what we can speak about at all there's the energetics there's the polarity (laughs) of when and in a same-sex relationship for there to be eroticism someone takes the masculine pole masculine energy is silence it is witness it is container building and it is strength the feminine someone who's a woman who identifies as a woman when she is in her masculine energy that's mm-hmm. another little rabbit hole to go to <laughs> most women when they're in a masculine energy they are in cortisol they're running on cortisol but in a relationship a woman holding space for her man if we're looking at a cisgendered you know heterosexual couple the woman still gets to hold the masculine pole if her man is needing the space to be in his feminine energy, which is chaotic energy, which is emotion. When a man is angry, when a man is in his addiction, if he's addicted to alcohol, if he's addicted to drugs, if he's addicted to something, that he's in his feminine energy. He's not effeminate. He's not being feminine. Feminine energy is chaos it is the surrender the feminine open she opens and surrenders to orgasm she unfolds more and more the feminine energy the feminine orgasmic state is insatiable mm. a man can be in a feminine state of just like hunger you know he wants more and more and more and he's opening and opening <laughs> more into orgasmic bliss he's still a man in his you know if he wants to identify i'm a man it's like yes you're a man but when you're in absolute <laughs> laughter or you're in anger he's occupying feminine energy so his wife can hold that space for him where she's silent she's holding space she's in strength she's witnessing she's creating the container but to have eroticism you you know you can't have two masculine poles coming to it's like magnets and the magnets are repel so we see this in a lot of relationships where we're talking about equality equality and erotic we where the mistake often happens is the fact or the the belief of equality then comes into sameness Mm -hmm. which is very important when dishes have got to be done seven nights a week it's fucking important (laughs) but there's a way that you can build polarity and have you know play in that but when it comes to eroticism we need mm-hmm. to have the poles and you can swap those poles as we know in right. kink there's role play and anything is role play but it's yeah as long as the opposites are present to build eroticism beautiful and the word that comes up for me inside of polarity is equilibrium right mm-hmm. like if we're ha- like regardless of the gender and and thank you for thank you for parceling all of that out you know the, mm-hmm. you know kind of separating between 
um, like your gender identity versus, you know, masculine and feminine energy. Um, because yeah, you can have like a same, you can have a same sex couple and still have that flow of masculine and feminine energy. And you can kind of occupy that space together. Um, and yeah, the word that comes up for me is equilibrium, right? Like mm -hmm. it's kind of like that, you know, if the, um, if the person who identifies as a woman, like, you know, that's, again, kind of using this like cisgender, like heterosexual couple as an example if the woman you know is holding more of the masculine energy then it allows for the space for the man to yeah. hold more of the feminine energy and it is more of that like flow and equilibrium um yes. yeah that's really beautiful so how does this kind of flow of energy um play into you know pleasure and what you what you teach people like what you want people to experience in pleasure mm, thank you so when i'm supporting my clients and especially if it is um a cisgendered couple what we're always concentrating on is when two people are together it's really different to the work scenario so when you're coming home how does the feminine open how does she surrender and open further into pleasure? And how does the masculine rise up and take control? When we take control, it's not controlling. It's not having control. It is in controlling position that is given. And it's given through trust. So with men, I teach them to really raise their energy. I mean, we're going to look at uh, the maps of arousal. In a man's body, his map of arousal starts as his cock and it comes up to the head. You know, the God, goddess, the creator knew exactly what they were doing. I tell you, it's like, this is the spiritual part. So yes, we have the erection, the direction of the erection. You like something you want. You've got a business idea you want to go for. Awesome. If you're going to use all of your energy and get excited and then spill your, your foods all out, you've lost, like you've left the building. It's like, so raising that up, you're, you know what you want. You're going for for what you want, you desire. This is the direction of the erection. <sighs> breathing that up, raising it up. There's all of these different ways to do that. You need lots of tools in your toolbox. You're raising it up your spine. You're bringing that up to your head so you know what to do, so you can hold the space, so you can stay strong. The feminine's map of arousal is the opposite. You need to entice her head. You've got to intrigue her. Is she intrigued by the idea? Does she trust it? If she trusts it, or if she's willing to trust and open, her heart will open. Once her heart is open, her pussy will open. We're looking at the opposite. So as a man, if you want to be with a woman, you've got to understand this. You've got to understand if you want your woman to open. Otherwise, you're going to have a bitching, nagging, pissed off partner for 30 years, which is often what happens is the woman's not getting the pleasure of the sex that she wants, which is her own responsibility. As for him, it's his own responsibility. Each person is responsible for their own pleasure. But which means we need to be responsible of the movement of energy through our body and how that happens, which comes to trust and opening on each side. Oh my gosh, that brings up so much. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because I do want to go into like, how does that happen? And, you know, what gets in people's way? You know, there's so mm. much that goes on. Um, so we're going to go on a quick break. And when we come back from the break, that's what we're going to talk about. Like, how do you, you know, move this energy in your body mm -hmm. so that you can be open to, you know, your lover or your, you know, partner and, you know, and then what comes up, what are some of the things that you might have to work through in mm -hmm. order to have that space and be open to that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. All right, welcome back from the break. You are at the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding in Love, and I'm here with Melissa Louise, and we are talking about pleasure. And what we left off with last time was talking about what women need and what men need. Um, and specifically, and I just want to make this explicitly clear, is that we're, we're talking about cisgendered um, people in this specific conversation um, and um, what men need and what women need to be open to pleasure or to hold the container for mm -hmm. pleasure with each other. 
And so Melissa, tell us a little bit more about that. And then I really want like the burning question in my mind is like, what do people deal with inside mm. of this? Like, what are the blocks that people come up against? So, so yeah, tell us a little bit more about the pleasure and then we're going to get into the blocks. Awesome. I mean, that word pleasure. We are going for pleasure. We're not going for orgasm. This is one huge disservice that we are fed. That sex means P and V. Sex means penis and vagina. I actually just wrote a post on this this morning um, for this week. Um, Dan Savage. This is one of Dan Savage's, you know, things that he's always talking about. If only cisgendered men, you know, approach women with the, with the, the four words that you know, in his community work talks about gay men speak about. And these four words are, what are you into? Because our perception generally from our cultural narrative is that if you are on a date, if you're going to be with someone, if things are happening, then sex is going to happen, which means there's going to be a penis in a vagina. Sex mm -hmm. is so much more than that. So if we understand that we're actually going for pleasure and we're not going for orgasm, because also too, what's fed to us is that an orgasm is a peak experience you know, and Masters and Johnson talk about this, the, the peak experience, but what they're talking about in orgasm, is it Masters and Johnson's? There's sort of the conglomerate that speaks about how orgasm happens in the body. The issue with that diagram, the issue with that narrative is that it speaks about one type of orgasm that's in the male body and they've transferred that onto the female body. The female body has one type of orgasm like that, yes, the clitoral, yet we are capable of so much for, more and we're designed to open up to so much more. So why we are focused on this fact that the way that we win, the way that we've achieved something, the way that something has worked, the way that we get what we're meant to be getting is going for orgasm. We're in a lot of dissatisfaction and the masculine issue is that they you know, they are sort of, they have this pressure to penetrate and the feminine issue is that we're broken. There's something wrong with us because we take too long because all of our education is based on the cock. This is what the cock does. This is what the penis does. This is how it works. And this is, this is the orgasm. The female body is never talked about in sex education. The only thing Unless that comes talking up. talking about menstruation. I was going to say, the only, yeah, <laughs> the only way that the female body comes up is the fear of pregnancy. So yeah. sex education is given to us in fear and it's given us to us in short bursts, which is not how the body works. So once we have that narrative set in our mind, we're then in this space that's actually not true, but we're all we're sort of like, when I say we, I'm talking the world at large, we're all running towards a corner that we're all being forced into that is such a tiny part of the picture. And so and this is where the feminine, that the female narrative comes is that I take too long and when men feel like they're failing, it's like, what's happened? What, you know, why are you not orgasming? I'm doing the thing. I'm penetrating you. You know, I'm doing it. So it's this thing of doing as opposed to being and unfolding and going for pleasure. Like, what are you into? So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I think that just, just that piece of knowledge right there, that not only is sex not just, you know, penis, vagina, penetration, um, but that orgasm is not necessarily even the point of sex mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that there's multiple different types of orgasms and there's different ways that we can have orgasmic experiences as well and that pleasure and sex can be separate like right mm -hmm. so oh my gosh okay oh this is so good <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you, you, you know, when you want to like wave a magic wand and like boop everybody on the head so that they know that, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. one of my things. That's one of my <laughs> people on the head things. <laughs> I wish I could boop people on the head with that information. We are going for pleasure, not orgasm. And yeah. pleasure is full of orgasm. And this is the thing. This is what I love sharing with my clients. You know, my favorite part when I work with clients is about five six weeks in and they come and go oh my god I've had the most amazing sex of my life and you haven't even told me what tricks to do and I'm like got nothing to do with tricks like, we haven't even got to that part yet and yet I'm having the best sex of my life I'm like yeah <laughs> yeah it's not about it's not about the thing 
<laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. Okay. So talk to me a little bit more about like inside of this conversation of what is pleasure. So it's kind of like holding these two spaces, right? Which is perfect because we're talking about polarities. Um, or we were talking about polarities with masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, okay, so what else comes up in pleasure? What else is possible in pleasure? And then what are people faced with? Like, what is kind of like the backhand of that where it's like, oh, well, how do I do that? Or like, you know, I know that shame comes up a lot, mm -hmm. you know, inside of pleasure or like the confusion. So anyway, so what else comes up in pleasure? What's possible? And then what comes up for people in dealing with that? Mm. So what is possible in pleasure? <laughs> I know, yeah. I just asked the biggest question. <laughs> <laughs> and my tongue's hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> so what I really love from my um, tantric background, when we're looking at pleasure, it's the five senses. The pleasure of sound, like your lover's voice, as they seduce you into a possibility. And that can happen. <laughs> I can see you as I open my because I close my eyes when I speak like this. I'm like, <laughs> the sound can happen through a voice message, through, you know, a phone call that when your lover or partner is in another room, another city, another country, the enticement of what's possible. Pleasure is what's possible. Pleasure happens through different touches through the skin you know, the releasing of energy, pleasures through the movement of energy. Like I give my clients these exquisite little practices to do with their lovers that, okay, I want you to spend half an hour <laughs> going from the knee to her groin on the left side, <laughs> you know, and we're going to do that. And what that does is it releases energy that stuck. Pleasure is about removing mm -hmm. the layers and they can be psychological layers. They can be layers of guilt. They can be layers of shame. They can be layers of, you know, not knowing what to do. So pleasure is open to all possibilities eating spending like creating an exquisite container in a date where you're going to sit across from each other in a public restaurant and slowly eat a mango <laughs> with your bare hands and you've got to take 20 minutes to do it and you've whatever it is pleasure is whatever turns you on sound taste smell the feeling of something how does it feel to have warm liquid coconut poured <laughs> sorry I just come to cock poured over the cock while she's standing there in high heels like everything psychological sensual sensation based whatever pleasure is anything and this is that the arena of kink you know mm -hmm. kink is what's not normal like we vilify in our culture the word kink or kinky sex yet sitting at a restaurant centrally eating you know, fruit with your hands can be someone's turn on, which could be seen as kinky, but it's just, it is a turn on. It's a pathway. Pleasure is a pathway to opening up. If we're going to get sciencey about it, pleasure is, you know, where you get to raise your dopamine, your oxytocin, which then resets your hormones, which then does all of these things, you know, to the, to your nervous system, to your vagus nerve. I mean, pleasure is absolutely necessary. And there's many, many pathways to that. So... Mm. I love how I asked the question, what is possible in pleasure and how you answered it was pleasure is what's possible. <laughs> 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 so with, yes, the, the, I mean, we could no. summarize that by saying pleasure is how you live life instead of waiting to die, <laughs> instead of living to die, you're just existing or you can live. <laughs> mm, oh my gosh. And I, I felt that I felt all of that sensation and opening up and the different possibilities that are there. And I think that the other thing that I heard in what you said is like, pleasure is creative. You know, mm. it's not like when we say like, pleasure is what's possible it's like there's this whole world it's and it's created and it's discovered mm -hmm. and it can be explored and it's almost when what I heard also in what you said is like the willingness to mm -hmm. explore as well mm -hmm. and then the other thing that I heard in what you said is the that when you take this pathway of pleasure that it is it does present what's in the way. Yeah. 
Right. And so, and that was the second part of my question, which is like, what comes up for people? And it's like, well, what comes up for people is whatever, was whatever comes up for people Mm -hmm. when they, when they start down this path. And I think that that's really perfect because it really is what comes up for the individual where it's like, if they have deep shame, that's exactly what's going to come up. If they have guilt, that's exactly what's going to come up. If they have trauma, if they, you know, whatever anger, you know, whatever that is, you know, that is what's going to come up in this journey. And that's also why I said like the willingness to do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah, I mean, beautifully, beautifully said and painted. Um, and we are going to take another break and we're going to come back. I'm like closing my eyes. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> Oh, like this conversation is just like enveloping my whole being. Um, and we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about, okay, like now we know about pleasure. Now we know about, you know, what's possible. And now it's like, okay, well, now what do I do? Now what, mm. now what do I do? So that's what we're going to talk about when we come back from this break Mm -hmm. and we'll see y'all in a second. All right. Welcome back from the break. Uh, We are here at the Elizabeth Cunningham show, courageously expanding in love and yes, courageously expanding in pleasure today with Melissa Louise. And so Um, We've talked a bit about, you know, laying the foundations of, you know, what's the difference uh, between gender and masculine and feminine energy and how do people receive different pleasure in different ways? And then what does pleasure even mean and discovering like pleasure is possibility and that things really come up for people inside of that, you know, and whatever comes up for you is like it's perfectly normal and natural. It's just what there is to to deal Mm -hmm. with now. Right. Mm. Um, and so I'd love to know more about, okay, so how do you apply this with people? How does mm. that, how does this actually work with people mm. that you work with? Yeah, thank you. So with women, the the biggest breakthrough is to really share with women that they're not broken, they're not a problem to fix. Yeah. They're not this mess that needs sorting out because we're often trying to fit the feminine experience into what is known as the masculine experience, which also dismisses many men's experience. So I really support women to understand how the orgasm in the female body is actually this. It goes up and left to the right. It comes out, it expands, it comes back in, it goes up, it goes deep, deep down and it's constant. And that emotions we are designed the amount of times that I hear women, you know, share, it's like, no, I won't cry. I feel like I need to cry or scream, but I won't. And what I really share with women, when you're doing that, you're creating more numbness. Your body is designed to shed and unleash emotion, emotion. If we're going to go down the track of epigenetics, like your grandmother and your mother's stuff, I mean, for want of a better way to describe it, is inside of your vagina wall, like any trauma or things that she dealt with in your exquisite work in the female body is to let that go, move through that, release that through orgasmic states. Your spiritual work as a woman in a woman's body is to keep on shifting and breaking through and and moving, transforming through orgasm. But orgasm is crying. Orgasm is anger sometimes. Sometimes you're in absolute like ecstasy that you've left your body. The only way to get when to get to those states is that trust we've got to find those places where we trust our partner we've got to make sure we have our no on board our body it's shifting the concept that our body our body is not there for someone else's masturbation purposes I know that's a really strong thing to say but it just it kind of like wakes us up sometimes and like hang on a minute you know our body's not there to be there for someone else it's our vehicle for transformation and we can have these orgasmic experience without even having penetration but to cry to let emotion out to scream with laughter to feel like we're stuck or we're going numb can often be like oh I've hit a plateau what breathe using sound making sure that we're using movement making sure that we are shifting through blockages to get to the other side on the other side of pain is pleasure on the other side of numbness is pleasure there's always something on the other side and it's our work to move through it as opposed to be stifled by it now working with the masculine like working with men 
it's really supporting them to understand that the woman's not a problem to fix. She's, he doesn't have to penetrate her. He's not, you know, holding that polarity of where he's building trust, where he holds strong. His sexual energy is designed to go up through his core, up into his chest, up his spine to his head. So he can hold strong, so he can be present with whatever the feminine throws at him. And what I love about working with men, I'm always brought to tears all the time with so much humbleness, is how men always come to me saying they want more from their woman. They want to see more. They want her to unleash. They want her to cry. They want her to piss and fart and do all of those things. But she's so, she, she won't. And the feminine's going, oh, he's not going to like me if I do that. It's like we're all wanting the same thing, but we're not having the conversation. So working with men to really hold that container. So they, they get to experience their superpower. Oh, my God, men building businesses. Do you know my clients go forth and make millions of dollars? Like the messages I get, I just made quarter of a million dollars in these last three months because I brought my cock into it. I'm like, yeah, baby. It's like the businesses they build. <laughs> you know, the experiences they create for their women because they're sexual. Napoleon. Napoleon Hill spoke about this in the 40s. He's, you know, all of his stuff in, what's that? Think Big Grow, and Grow Rich, I think chapter 13 or 11 or something. He speaks about if the man does not, a man that's ahead of his business, a man that's on his mission, if he does not bring his sex magic into it, if he does not bring his sexual energy into it, he's not living his full potential. Because when you throw it into a bin, when you throw it down a toilet, tied up in a condom, you've wasted all of this creative energy. It's designed for your body. So when a man, I mean, the, you know, when a man is holding his sexual energy, he's so much more trustable. He's so, because you know that he can hold the container that no matter if you cry, if you scream, if you, you know, you, you don't know where your emotions are, if you let go wildly and you're an absolute bet, he's holding the container, holding the container. This is not to make men wrong if, you know, of course, if you ejaculate, I'm not here to shame ejaculation. When you do ejaculate, make sure it's used on her skin. Make sure she's, you know, her whole body is absorbing that because you've got yin and yang energy that's, you know, been building between the two of you. That's, you know, that's also part of the conversation. But we're looking at the energetics of being able to handle what life throws at you because you're strengthening your resolve, you're strengthening the container, you're strengthening your power. This is your, one client of mine calls it his rocket fuel. It's his rocket fuel, like getting through the day. And it's just, it's so, it's so wonderful because we have industries that are hell bent on making sure men don't experience that because you, then you have a weak culture. I and mean, we can go, I won't go down the hole below, but how to weaken a culture is to vilify the feminine and to make sure the man's disempowered. So make sure he ejaculates a lot, make sure he throws away his energy because now he's weak. I mean, I've been in communities where women know if they want the Ferrari, they want the new mansion, they want the diamond ring, they pull the ejaculate out of their man and then they ask because the man's weak. It's just an energetic thing. He's lost all of his power and he's just like, yeah, whatever, you know, because he's, he's separated, like it's known. I mean, I'm, I think, I think that's a horrible way to operate, but it's talked about a lot. So if we come from that place, it's like ah, the power mm. in the masculine when he holds his sexual energy and uses it for himself is so exquisite. Wow. And, and this is such a, I mean, especially in the conversation of our culture, this is such mm. a unique conversation. Um, because we do talk about how women shouldn't be emotional and, um, or if they're emotional, that it's bad, right? It's like, well, women are emotional, but it's bad. Um, or mm -hmm. just women shouldn't be emotional. Right. And mm. that, and, um, and that, yeah, like there is this, um, like you have to release, like, and I've heard that too. Like, even though I'm not, I'm not a man, I don't identify as a man, but I've, I've heard that in this conversation where it's just like, oh, well, you need to do it and you need to do it fast and you need to, blah, blah, blah. or if you do it too fast, then that's bad. It's like, you know, there's so mm. much that you can do wrong and there's so much, like, there's so much manipulation underneath mm. all of that, yeah. um, that when we're having these conversations, we're not able to fully express and say what's authentically there for us. And I actually had a, like, personal, personal experience where, um, I was dating, um, a man, um, cisgendered man and he, um, he would, he was, he wanted me to be more. 
he wanted, he, like, I, I heard myself in what you just shared. Um, I was, just, and I remember that. And I remember him being like, I want you to let go. I want to, you know, I want to hold you. I want to be there for you. I want to like, I think what he kept saying is like, I want to experience you. I'm pretty sure it, or mm. something around that. Like, I want to fully experience you. I want you to feel, and he said, I want you to feel safe with me. Mm -hmm. and and I didn't and I was and I was scared and I was like and I I was stuck in this place that you're talking about which is like I shouldn't be loud I shouldn't be emotive I shouldn't you know it, it's too much I'm too much um mm -hmm. and that and that it's not a safe space right and it wasn't anything that he was doing necessarily it was like that's what I truly believed about myself and about what was possible inside of sex and pleasure mm -hmm. and those containers and so what you said really like truly and deeply resonated with my own <laughs> experience mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. cisgendered woman who also um uh is you know, has dated and mm -hmm. has, has, has had sex and like, you know, pleasurable experiences with um, cisgender men as well. Um, and yeah, and I just, every, what you said was really relatable. Mm. And I really get how passionate you are about <laughs> this, about mm. this subject and how important it is. And what do you see like when people are fully able to express this and you said a lot about like the men and like that was really cool like what men are able to like do when they're able to like really hold that masculine energy so well um but what have you seen as possible also with women or with their partners possibly that that you're working with as well what do, can you just clarify so what what is possible for the feminine when she goes into this work yeah yes so women's natural state is insatiability. Her natural state is to be insatiable. Our body also really thrives through pleasure. So what I see that happens with women, most women that come to me of like, I can't have an orgasm, you know, in my vagina. Like it's always just clitoral. I can't orgasm when, when my man's inside of me, when, you know, when I'm being penetrated. What I see is that their whole world open up and the possibility of like once they have their no on board, once they actually become their own backup dancer to their own genitalia, when they get to know their, their inner world, that these orgasmic states are available mm -hmm. so much of the time where they then start to experience cervical orgasms, where they start to experience the hunger for their partner again where they've just been they've been rejecting sex because they're not getting the sex that they want and that's a two-way street we're responsible for our own pleasure so many women that I work with even come to me with the aspect of like but I don't even know what I like mm -hmm. I don't even know what is possible I see it all on the internet I hear about this um, and so it's getting their boundaries on board and no on board discovering what is possible for them on their own journey before they even come to their partner so then what happens is this newfound excitement for the relationship how the relationship like nourishes like your sex life in a relationship your sex life is designed to nourish the relationship it's designed to really fuel the relationship so then we have the erotic space so that your life is on a constant simmer this is you know this perception that oh yeah well we've been together 20 years now it's not like it's like oh my god 20, it's like you you know re-found like you found related ways to relate and build on this eroticism is taking orgasm off the table taking penetration off the table and discovering the whole possibility and their body opens to their man again instead of closing off because they're not getting what they want, but they become responsible for their own self. Also becoming, you know, the, their own advocate around their menstrual cycle or their moon cycle if they've gone through menopause. is like, I freaking matter and I deserve to be able to take up place in this world as a woman in my female experience, not like where we're overtaking. It's like we des what I share with my clients is we're here to have power with our men, alongside of our men, not over our men. We're not here to take power over them. We need to walk side by side. And what that takes is becoming sovereign around our own experience as women in the feminine experience in our body. And we need to advocate for that. We can't expect 
others to. We have to advocate for that ourselves. We're in the body. We're in the experience. We've got to put the stake in and claim that ourselves and find really good ways for that. Yeah. Then, and that's, that's, I love that you keep bringing up this. I mean, everything that you're saying is beautiful. <laughs> I, hope everyone, I hope everyone that is watching is taking vigorous notes <laughs> right now. Uh, and one of the things that uh, really resonated with me is this idea of autonomy, right? And that mm -hmm. you're saying, you know, we're all responsible for our pleasure. And that's one thing that I see gets in the way of our pleasure is putting the onus on someone else or blaming someone else, blaming your partner mm -hmm. for not receiving the pleasure that you really want. And mm -hmm. I think that that's also a block in being able to experience our full pleasure and being able to experience our, our full selves mm -hmm. is when we, we don't take on that, that responsibility. And, and when I say responsibility, you know, I don't mean like, blame like you said you know mm -hmm, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing about you that needs to be fixed but really owning your own autonomy like that's what I mean by responsibility right and being able to like take that ownership of your own pleasure and discover what that is and be able to share it with your lover and then being able to go on that journey together. And I love what you said about like the 20 years, because it is, it's like that typical, and yeah, we are, we're going to skip the great break. We're just going to fly right past the break. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, it is it's that typical conversation of, oh, well, we've been together 20 years and oh yeah, like, you know, people who are, uh, you know, two years into the relationship. Yeah. You know, they have crazy sex lives, but eh, like, that's for those people, not for me. Mm -hmm. um, or not for us rather, but it's like, but what, again, if pleasure is possibility, then really allowing for that journey to continue to unfold and uh, everything just fits in so perfectly with what you said, being able to shed, being able to shed those stories of like, oh, we mm -hmm. have to stop having pleasure after a certain amount of time, or we, you know, it's, it is someone else's fault or, you know, something like that, where those nor normal places where it's part of the cultural narrative that those are legitimate places mm -hmm. to stop. And what I'm hearing you say is that fuck that shit. Just like <laughs> <laughs> basically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, that's not a place to stop at all. That's a place to like move through, move past, move into mm. that next step of pleasure. Like. When we look at, um, when we're looking at pleasure and life and turn on mm -hmm. and how I equate it is when we, when we're losing this, you're looking at a 20 year relationship or oh, that's not for me. We've been together for a long time. To me, what that is saying is that you've given up on life. You've given up on the turn on in life. You've decided that you don't deserve to have deep, deep happiness, deep joy that's around turn on. It's once again around this aspect of sex is in the corner and turn on and eroticism is around being attracted to a partner, someone else that you want to have sex with. But turn on is actually turn on to life. Where's the eroticism to life? Where's the joy to life? And so we also live in a culture where we have many, many things where we can keep on numbing our experience. The crescential, the crescential retired couple that are like now hate each other because now they're at home with each other all the time. And yet they've existed this existence and they've gotten to a place that they're meant to have gotten. And they're so miserable because of the fact of a container that isn't living up to what is true to them. So when we're also living a life that is pleasure filled, we're like, fuck what everyone else is doing this is what makes me happy and my happiness bloody well matters if I'm going to be on the planet for 80 years and I'm going to have paid tax some of us <laughs> and I've done all of the things that society told me I you know my happiness really matters yeah. and this is what my happiness looks like this is what my turn on to life looks like and we bloody well deserve to go towards that do you know why because we're breathing the only requirement that you need to live a turned on life is that you still exist in the body that you're in. The fact that you're alive. 
once you get up over there and once you've been on the other side, you're going to say, oh, holy shit, <laughs> I had 80 years in that body and I could have done all of these things. You don't want to regret that because coming back is a long journey. You've got to be a baby again. You've got to be a toddler again. You don't want that. Do it now. <laughs> like Just realize it now that you're alive, you're breathing. It is the only permission that you need. You don't need anyone else's permission. You're here to live a turned on live because the fact is you are alive and that's it. It's the only requirement. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. Okay, so mm. I want to know, we talked about some amazing things. Seriously, we've talked about some amazing things. If anyone who's watching this live is just now joining us, um, please rewatch this. Please, <laughs> like, <laughs> I beg of you. I beg of you. Um, <laughs> if you know what's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, rewatch this. Um, and, you know, for anyone who is watching or listening to the replay, uh, you know, I, oh my gosh, I hope, I, again, I hope that you've been taking notes. Um, uh, and I want to know, um, what is one thing if, you know, with all of that we've talked about today, if you could give people just one thing that's, you know, the most important takeaway or like the action to go do, you know, what would that be? Oh, I love this question. <laughs> <sighs> I'm only allowed to have one. Okay. At least I get one for men, one for women. Just give me that. <laughs> Please. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. So women, for women, breast massage, many reasons for this. When a woman changes the relationship with her breast, she changes the relationship with the world around her. So when she heals her relationship with the breast, she heals the relationship with the world around her. The Taoists teach this as soon as a young girl starts menstruating, she needs to start breast massaging. It's We're talking about lymphatic drainage. We're talking about reset of hormones. We're talking about the, the hormone reset and the stimulation of the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the pineal, like all of this stuff that the medical world has taken over for us. But guess what? We have it all inside of us. So breast massage. Many women are raised with the fact that their breasts, uh, you know, it's public um, opinion. So many women are ashamed of their breasts. They're not, you know, they're not the way they should be. God knows. I mean, I can't understand this should when there's like 4 billion women in the world. It's like, oh my God, that's like 8 billion boobies. How are they meant to look? <laughs> like, Jesus, <laughs> it's like a lot of boobies. To there's say. not a way. There's not a way that your boobs are meant to look. <laughs> so what the other thing is, is the more that we touch them and play with them and massage and they... <laughs> They fill into our hands, they get bigger and firmer. Not that that's what we're going for, but they rise to the occasion. It's in the, you know, it's like the tantric, you know, like where we place attention, energy goes. Tantra's always talked about that. Science talks about it. Joe just, everyone's banging on about it nowadays. It's like where you place <laughs> attention, energy goes. Yeah. So, so play with your breasts, you know, play with your breasts, massage and love them. You're bringing self love into the heart, heart centered stuff. Men, you get to play with your testicles. <laughs> Firstly, there's a scientific reason. Secondly, it's really lots of fun. Thirdly, it's like you, you also, it's one part of being able to last longer, but testicle massage moves energy. It moves hormones. It moves blood. Like it also allows you to, you know, train yourself that your lover can grab them more, pull them more. There's so many things. And mix it up. Like when I say breast massage and testicle massage, we're not just using just hands every day. Use warm coconut oil, cold coconut, coconut oil, warm olive oil, use mango juice, use papayas. I don't give a shit what you use. Bring <laughs> it on. Should you, people say, how, like, da, da, da. you know, the woman's vagina is different every single day. So you got to practice for that. <laughs> you got to, like, how do I get better in sex? Practice. On your own. <laughs> with many, like you know you don't expect to play soccer every Saturday and win a game without practicing like mm. you know I love bringing that analogy to men it's like well if you're a woodworker you're going to practice your turns so if you want to be good at sex you got to practice your sex you got to masturbate so testicle massage and breast massage it just gets all a bit practical <laughs> but anyway <laughs> brilliant brilliant okay and you have a so everybody heard it breast massage play with your testicles fantastic just play um, with your bits play with your bits play with your bits <laughs> um all right and you have a very generous giveaway that you Ooh. offer that you want to give away <laughs> I do. And now I'm like, I know it's in the back of my mind. I know no. I do have the free pleasure, pleasure guide. That's right. And so. was I saying is like, if people go to my Instagram, uh, 
account, you've got to like me. <laughs> you got to give me some love. You know, this you got you got to work for it. And then if you <laughs> message me the word pleasure, I think if you you know send me a message pleasure, I have some videos and I'm going to send you in an email some links and some videos because I've just done a five day five day to Valentine things. So I'm going to give you some of those videos etc and then you'll be on my email list which means you just get really fucking sexy fun emails every week it's true it's a fact yeah <laughs> video series three practices to deepen your relationship um yeah really? follow and there is there are links um to all of your stuff um on here as well and mm -hmm. then um we're we're coming to the end of our show and so i just also want to promote you as well mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I have it all written down here, so I'll do the, I'll do it for you. Um, okay, but, thank you. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Melissa Louise has a um, all women's ten week program um, starting in the last week of March. Um, so March the 29th, it's called Program of Love. Um, she has curated design experiences in Mexico. Um, if people want to come down and work with her over a weekend or a week, and she also does one-on-one -on -one coaching for men. Again, all of that information um, can be found in the show notes. You can, um, again, get, get the giveaway. Definitely get the giveaway. If you do, you know, get the giveaway, three video series um, to deepen your relationship. Um, find her on Instagram and message the word pleasure um, and then get on board get on board with this pleasure train mm, um, mm, mm. Melissa Louise thank you so much for coming on the show today and talking with me talking with us about pleasure and <laughs> that not just what's possible in pleasure but pleasure <laughs> is what's possible, possible. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it mm. thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart i appreciate you so much oh honey thank you it has been such a pleasure and I so appreciate being able to come on and just and just jam with you and mm -hmm. talk about, you know, all of the stuff that we love. So thank oh. you, thank you, thank you. I so appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are so welcome. All right, I'm full. Everyone who is listening or watching, I also hope that you are full and take on everything that Melissa Louise has shared today. And until the next time that we meet, which is um, every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time here on the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, I hope that you go out and courageously expand your life in love. Mm -hmm. You have been listening to The Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Tune in live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we shed light on relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. Learn to love yourself and create the relationships you want. Connect with me at elizabethannecunningham.com. That's elizabethannecunningham.com.